web-based game using Django as its backend. I left, um, I was just thinking about how to deal with, um, how to deal with the template changes that make sense for rooms in light of visits. So um, I was dealing with how to give the how to give a player, how to give a user with a character a um, how to give a user with a character their moves through the maze and I the more I reflect on it the more I think that that shouldn't be done um, at least not by um, oh well hang on so this gets complicated by the fact that a user is going to return to the game by entering a URL right they might have it bookmarked or something like that. So when they come back, the the Django session will be restored because of the cookie that they have. But the hold up, am I not streaming? What's going on? No, everything's good. Ah, there we go. Um, where was I? Right, I was saying the character comes through, they have a user, or they have a the player come the player comes through they have a character they're in this room if they don't have a character they shouldn't be in that room unless they're a super user if they if a if a user has more than one character, it's both in the grotto. We could assume we can think about them both being in the same room, even. If they come back, how do they register what character they are? How do they register what character they are? So let's explore that scenario a little bit more. I have I have uh, two characters. Uh, we can look at them in the in the admin here, I have a character in the India Red Room, and I have a character in the Blue Bottle Room. So, if I'm the user and I'm coming to play the game, and I just navigate to the Blue Bottle Room, which is where I was. Rather, mm, Um, 
So my thinking is that if a user, if there's some discrepancy, if you're unsure about which, like, uh, okay, let me, let me back up, let me back up. So in this instance, if I'm the user and I'm just navigating myself right back to Grotto by going to rooms slash blue bottle, and I have a character who is in the blue bottle room, then the game ought to, I don't know, resume state on that, on that character? seamlessly pick up where you were let you play as that character until you navigate yourself back to the guild hall and change characters the only discrepancy comes in the case where I have two characters that are both in the blue bottle room If I navigate to the blue bottle room, which character do I get control of? Okay, so... So we could have some bit of hidden state in the cookie, for instance, that says what character you're playing as right now, and that can be changed in the guild hall. Um, That kind of seems like the cleanest thing to do. If you're playing as a character and you navigate to a room that you're not in, then it'll take you to the guild hall. If you put the URL in for a room that you're not in, then you'll go back to the guild hall. Um, hmm. Okay. Let's see about that. I've never had occasion to store anything intentionally in a cookie in Django. So Django session, let's see what happens. Wow, I really don't like that website. I would much rather see Stack Overflow Oh, I have a thing. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> okay. Hmm. actually read the docs that's better um, it could it be really that easy uh, let's see okay so if we want to have a cookie based session we set the session engine to that thing Session data will be stored using Django tools, cryptographic signing for uh, and secret key setting. Okay, no problem. 
see the key. Okay. Let's check on how well sessions are enabled. Mm, I don't see nothing about sessions. We should see, okay, so session middleware is there. That's good. Sessions, you might as well remove blah blah blah. And sessions from your installed apps. Is that there? Okay, it's there. Good. Configuring the session engine. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know what? I think that a database backed session is fine. Again, for now, it's it's like not a big deal. Um, and then I'm guessing that there already is some. I'm gonna just kind of take it as on faith that the session stuff works without doing any any extra special business. Hey, whoa, there we go. <coughs> okay, it does not fall back to putting session. I okay, so it's a cookie-based thing. Um, easy peasy. So let's figure out that session business um, and the, I, I just want to go back to the docs we'll read a little bit more using sessions and views jeez yeah let's stick it to 3.1 get that stupid banner to go away Okay, no problem. Okay, so it seems like we should just be able to use the session attribute of the request. Let's do it. So in my room view here, I want to um, I want to see if there's a character associated with the session. Um, and I want that to, to um, I want that to change what the context looks like. So uh, let's do a get context data. You know what? I'm just gonna steal all this up here since there's a bit of boilerplate there. So uh, we don't need that line. Um, <coughs> So I want to use request.session. That actually looks like self.request. Session right here. Um, and I want to pull the character PK. 
value. And actually, I want this to. I don't want it to throw an exception or anything like that. I just want it to return none. And I'm pretty sure that's what we get here. Default none. Yep. So, uh, if there's a character, then I want to. So I want to let a an administrator through. And actually using this session lets me simplify some other activities. So we can probably clean up some URLs and, and make this thing a little bit better. Uh, so then if If character PK is not none, then let's get the character. You know what? I should do a character middleware. Mm. Mm. Yeah, character middleware actually makes this a lot cooler. make a note for myself later so the character middleware would deal with getting this getting the actual character model instance um, seamlessly more seamlessly for now since we're only doing it just this once we'll put it here we can refactor it into the middleware uh, as needed so I'm going to say character equals character dot objects dot get pk equals character pk. And actually, you know what, I'm just going to shortcut this a little bit. So next up, I want to try. I want to. I want to allow administrators through to see the room, and anybody with a character. Um, if it's not the room, then rather, if if the character is in a room other than the one that they're trying to view, then they'll get sent back to the guild hall. so that they can actually find their character and, and, and go to where they are. So if character is none and uh, self.request.user Super user is that an attribute or what? What is that? Okay, yeah, that should just be an attribute uh, and not. Okay.
be if there's not a character and if it's not a super user then I want them to be redirected back to the guild hall so return redirect Poopy, this can't be in get context data. That's not how this works at all. Okay, I'm gonna have to put that in the actual view function, the, the method. Um, so this will have to be in like the get. CCBV. What's the base class here? Detailed view. Detailed view. Okay, we don't do anything special there. We have to do this though, so let's deal with that first. Uh, and then we get the object, self object. Okay, so that injects character. It sends somebody back somewhere else if they don't have a character. Um, okay, and it sets up a pattern for if we need to do this as a middleware. Then, uh, so this doesn't need to be self.request anymore. This could just be quest now we need to set the uh, character um, and when will that be set that can be set whenever let's go back to the guild oh my Uh, so my thinking is that whenever I click here and go view that character sheet that, that should make this my active character and if I go back and view Whistlin, Whistin, then that will become my active character so I'm thinking uh, that it's this page which maps to some view somewhere let's figure out which one Do, 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 do. Uh, that's you, so character detail view, you, easy. So now, if someone is here, if they've, if they've gotten this far, they've gotten this far then we ought to be able to set their um, set their uh, 
session variable. Uh, <clears throat> Here we'll use the quarg for that. Should be pk. So with this in mind, let's do some testing. I can go here. Oh boy, session store object has no attribute set. What did I do wrong? Well, let's go look. Oh, there's no set. I just have to do an equal. No problem. So something happened. And then if I enter the grotto, ooh. Why didn't it like that? didn't like it because I need to import some stuff. So I should be in the yellow kite paste room now as Gwisson. I love it. This is showing up correctly, but it's ugly as hell. Game character three move blue bottle. It's it's not it's not pretty. It lets the game be played by multiple characters at once, like in two different tabs. Um, but you could achieve the same thing by opening up a private session and logging in separately. So um, I'd like to get rid of that character three business in there as well as in the <coughs> here in the enter the grotto. Um, it's better for that to not Better for that to not say character three, because we can implicitly get that from the session now. So let's fix up our URLs to reflect this new reality here, um, and let's get rid of this business in both cases. And then let's fix the views as well. So I don't want this. Rather, yeah, I don't want this at all. I want the character to already be in the Hmm. Now I don't need it in the context, not here, because this is just a redirect view. We're just doing some game control. Um, so what I want here is Yeah, I really think that it's that I um 
a middleware makes a lot of sense. At the very least, a context processor. Because what I really. Need to see happen is the character be available. To any view. That we encounter. Okay. So let's let's explore what a millware is. I mean, I know what it is, but uh, for anybody else watching who might not know what it is, I'm just going to go into it a little bit. So a middleware for Django. Um, it's um, all the middleware happens seamlessly uh, as the request comes in. So um, a request comes in, the middlewares go through it. They do different stuff depending on what the middleware is. Like there's an authentication middleware that associates user with, with requests and gives you access to like request.user. Um, and you, uh, yeah, they give you some patterns to follow. I'm just reading these in my head here. So this get response is a trick. Uh, whenever you're getting the response, this is sort of globally get in quotes here get response. It's either and this is described right here. It's either the actual view that's trying to be run by the user, um, or it's the next middleware in the chain. So something in the request is um, is analyzed um, a change is made and then um, off it goes to the next thing and then if something is supposed to happen after uh, the response comes in then um, you can do so here so you can do like cleanup um, so it's sort of like it behaves as it's it's just like recursing into each of the middleware as it goes and then popping out and doing the, the cleanup stuff and then finally returning the response um, <clears throat> so this is a little complex for what we need I think I don't actually think we need to act on the uh, on the the request itself I think a context processor is probably sufficient. Ultimately, um, you know, I'm, I'm able to, to base um, I'm able to base decisions in the view off of the context itself, and that is um, uh, that should be good enough. What I would like to do though is to avoid having to do this boilerplate everywhere. So let's look at what a context processor is, and we can sort of contrast and compare. Oh, wow, four viewers. Welcome, folks. Um, if I'm getting to understand, feel free to chat, and we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, welcome, welcome to the uh, channel here. Uh, so I was looking at Django context processors. Get though, 
Um, so let's look at that, and I want to get the most recent. Uh, whoa. Documentation version 2. Come on. Oh, page not found. Something happened between 2 and 3. I'm going to go to Zeal. Zeal has the version 3 docs. I'm just going to look into context processors. Let's see, there's a subject here. Ba -ba -ba. What I want to be sure about is that the context processors all get called whenever you do get context data. And the easiest way to check that, I think, is probably just to look at the source on GitHub. GitHub.com. And let's go to Django. I just started, I just turned on the dark mode, and I'm not, I'm not quite sure I love it on GitHub. Chat with me, let me know what you think about the dark versus the light here. It looks fine, it just doesn't, yeah. It doesn't quite fit right. I think, I guess maybe that's probably just psychosomatic. Like I don't, whenever I look at the, whenever I look at GitHub, I expect it to be, you know, white. Anyways, if you have opinions, chat with me, let me know. Um, so I'm looking at the, what I want to look at is a, the view, sort of base view here. Check that base. Yeah, that seems good. The view proper it doesn't have anything. Doesn't inherit from anything, rather. So if we find the ooh, why am I not doing this in CCVV? What the hell? I've been talking about how easy CCVV is. And then I, what do I do? I turn around and go straight to the source in GitHub instead of exploring it here. Uh, so this doesn't include a Git context. So what do? Uh, let's let's go. To, let's just go to the top level page here. Let's have a look. See. Just pick delete view. See if that has what we're looking for. And it does get context data. Oh, single op context mix in. I like it. Now, where in the heck? Okay, maybe the con. Okay. Uh, this is me not knowing perfectly what Django is doing with the context processors. What I want to know is when in the request response loop did the context processors get processed? Boo, boo, boo. <clears throat> Could be here in common middleware. Okay, this is a question probably for Stack Overflow. Um, Django, when do context processors run? I see somebody else has come into this.
Ooh. Ho ho. This. This I like. I don't see that the context from a context processor is available in context, for instance. Uh, like, I don't see those things running. I think that those might run more as part of the templating engine, like giving supplementary context to the template proper, uh, which is supplemented by whatever is coming through here. Um, so that does us no good because I want to be able to use that character. Um, I want to be able to use character in my view to affect behavior. So that that kind of takes me back to thinking uh, that we're thinking that we're th that we're wanting middleware here. I think this might answer the question for us. So the engine and the context. Playing with context objects. Configuring. I don't think we need to do any configure except for the. Text processors. Take a request object as their argument. To be merged and return. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Rendering a context. Template.render context. short of it is that I think that the templating engine is doing these context processors independent of the view which means if I want to be able to use character for instance in the view function itself I need to have a middleware to handle it so let's go back and let's write ourselves a simple middleware Let's first look at the middlewares that we have. These are all sort of real Django official middlewares, so that's cool. We're going to have a new one for ourselves here. <coughs> I want to say it's Grotto Middleware. Character Middleware. should correspond to a um, I'm just gonna say dot game just to keep everything centralized here. So in game I'm gonna make a new file called middleware py and in this I'm gonna make a I'll use the class approach Is there a middleware, a base middleware class that I should be inheriting from? Middleware.
Okay, no problem. I'm gonna just look at the code then. If you want to be a butt about it, Django. Uh, actually, let's check CCBV. I don't think it goes into middleware, but I don't see any reason that it couldn't. No middleware. Okay, so back to the source. Look at Django middleware. Middleware mixin. Love it. Where it's that from? It's from deprecation. Cool. Don't want that. see what that is. Utils deprecation. We're going to jump down some rabbit holes here. Utils deprecation. I'm guessing I don't want to use it because it's in a file called deprecation. But Then again, uh, okay. Django middleware makes it in deprecation. Interesting. Both of those get an upload because they're both very good. So they seem at least let's let's see about that in the Oh, it's gonna tell me the exact same thing that this guy just told me. So I can just do it as a function. Um, this oh yeah so it's going into exactly what the guy was saying in the stack overflow question okay so I just want to use this pattern here I 
And then how do I activate that? So I don't love that they don't have any... Well, let's look. Let's look at secu security middleware and see what form that takes. holding my super key fat fingering uh, middleware security okay so these are all using the uh, class-based modology it when called gets a get response okay I'm gonna try it out with the simple function style middleware style rather or a, a, a mix a decorator style yeah decorator style and we're going to call this uh, character middleware nothing special needs to happen here I want to one of you and later middleware are called so here's where I'll get the character detail <coughs> um, I yeah I don't need to deal with any redirecting or anything like that so in the request session dot yeah request dot session dot get character actually why the hell am I even <coughs> settings I fix this to be okay let's see then I should be able to do self dot request dot character I might want to do a context processor still to ensure the character always appears in the context but down here I shouldn't need that right I should just be able to do here super <coughs> checking context anymore, I'm checking the request. Request by character. Okay. do I test this now oh, I guess I can just do it as a super user I'm a super user here so I can just 
duplicate this tab and I can go, oh great. Character is not, oh, the middleware, yeah. Well, that shows me that it's working. Cool. From character. is not defined. Oh, of course not. Ridiculous. Cool. That, that, that's back to working. Let's go now to um, rooms model. Okay, it lets me in there. It doesn't care so that's fine now let's try it I think I have another user here post 8000 g enter uh, pull 2 I have no characters so if I, that means that I can't have a character set in my um, uh, session. So if I go to rooms, room bottle, sweet, takes me right back here. That's perfect. I love it. Okay, now let's give a context processor as well. So for our context processor, this sort of goes hand in hand with the um, with the middleware. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Writing your own context processors. Why? Thank you. I don't even have to do anything special at all. Just a function that accepts a request, returns a dictionary. So, death, uh, character, context, quest. Uh, I should just be able to turn that. say that's good enough let's put it in our settings let's see what we get got context processors here I want to do auto.gain.contextprocessors.character I'm going to change it up a little bit instead of calling it character context I'm going to call it just character keep it simple so now I should not need that. And we've cleaned up our life a little bit. So let's have a look see. That's still normal. I need to log out. Uh, let's just close this tab, open up a new private window, and then go back to localhost. I'll enter. I will call got two characters I pick one that's my character now if I go into the grotto oof mm. easy fix um, yeah this character too should be gone that needs to be removed from views There it is. So this is where having using reverses would be better. Um, because then I wouldn't have to update this manually and keep it synchronized. But that's that's okay. I'm not 
we're gonna just deal with that for now. We can make this a little bit more robust later. So enter the, oh, you jerk. Oh, I needed to go back and refresh. Enter, oh, but. Enter grotto view. Character does not exist. What? Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, so we still want to deal with not having a character, but now character is in request so um, the, 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 the if quest dot character is none character does not exist otherwise it goes on um, so this can go away this can go away um, and then for the rest of these characters should be able to fix move view at the same time just make sure everything stays working um, and actually I may not even need at this point I've guaranteed that if you're in if you're looking at a room that you have a character or are a super user and super users can kind of float around and look at all the things uh, without leaving a trace um, so if you're looking at a room then you either have a character or you are a super user which means I don't need any special actions to trigger anything at all I can just do that from the room itself Hmm. Okay. I I think that what I said is true. I'm going to stick with the I'm going to stick with the um with having this dedicated move view just for the time being. So that there is a dedicated view for controlling how the gameplay goes. I don't necessarily want the room view itself controlling how the gameplay happens. Um, okay, so let's fix this up. Ba -ba -ba. Characters here. Yo, what's up, Lalo? How you doing, man? Welcome to the channel. Doing a little Django programming, working on a, a web-based game called Grotto. Hit me if you have any questions about what I'm working on, and I will do my best to explain it. Okay, so I so I yeah, I think this is right. I need to fix the URL. I think I did fix the URLs actually. Uh, let's go here. Oh boy, looks for move with our, okay. So it's looking for move with too many arguments. Um, that's a template itself let's go to room html we should be able to get rid of the character dependence here oh god not that and then bingo so 
so now if I hover over this, it's gonna, yes, I should be able to move to Light Golden Red Room, everything is awesome. I should be able to move to Indian Red Room, everything is awesome. I should be able to move to Whitewash Room, everything looks freaking great. I'm very excited. If I try going to some other room, right, like if I go to Indian Red, oh, what? Why did it take me there? That's confusing. Let's uh, let's look at the admin and let's see where my character is right now. Is that the right character? I'm kind of confused. Whitewash room seems like where I should be. Let's check all the visits. Hey. No. What if I go to like Golden Rod? Uh huh. Okay. So something is afoot. Let's go, uh, let's go back to guild. One L to guild, please. And if I'm looking at Fey, and I enter the grotto, it takes me to the whitewash room. That's where I am right now. Why can I go to... Indian Red. Why is that, folks? Why can't I go to Indian Red? I shouldn't be able. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, different code. Different code's gonna be uh, different level of complexity. I think that Django is. Um, I think that Django is actually. It, it requires a bit of special knowledge, but once you've got that, it's the the code aspect of it is it really gets out of the way. A lot of what Django offers for us is this ability to define things declaratively and to be able to say um, what a thing is without having to make a huge amount of code, right? So I'm, here I'm defining a database model, and all of the behavior is encoded immediately in just that that super class models dot model um, and then from there it knows what I mean whenever I define these things as fields and I think that's amazing that you don't have to do a lot of that background work to like just make it happen so by writing a, a little bit of code and this isn't even really code right like it's declarative it it syntactically it's Python code but it's not I'm not doing any logic there, I'm just declaring something. So by doing this sort of declarative thing, I get a lot of functionality out of it. And I think that Django has a lot of that, um, where it, it's, you know, you're, you're just declaring how things ought to be and letting Django do all of the work in the, in the background to make that a reality. So yeah, the code, it does look a little complicated, but again, this is all just declaration most of this stuff is just declaration. It's whenever you get down into um, into some really specific stuff, right? This is the only real code that I've had to write so far. Likewise, the middleware is the only real, real code that's doing anything. Everything else is just declaration. So once you know what sort of stuff is expected to be declared in a different uh, in a different type of thing, like a list view, for instance. Then it all becomes a little bit, a little bit easier. Yeah, so uh, I get it if it's intimidating, but you gotta look at it for a while, and it'll be uh, it'll be simple enough for you soon. Um, right. So what was I? I was getting at something. Um, as a user, as a normal user, I was able to navigate to a room. Um, that I'm not in. And as evidence here, they 
<clears throat> is in the white washroom. Lo and behold, I'm able to pull up Indian Red as a room that I'm in. And if I try to, um, if I try to move to a different room, it complains because it's not accessible. It's because I'm I'm actually in the white washroom. So I need to do a little bit better here um, in the room detail view, which is ultimately what is rendering that rendering that template we were looking at. Um, In there, I need to do another check. I checked already if there's not a character and if the user is not the admin, it's not super user, then I redirect back to guild. Um, I should also check if um, if request that character. Uh, okay, let's is none. Let's ref if request dot character dot room PK. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm just going to hardwire this else uh, quarns dot pk let's do update I think that what we have here is color slug and I'm going to just use request dot character dot Oh no, that's bad. Okay, what I was thinking about doing here was just replacing the color slug of the room that they're in. But uh, if I do that, then we get weird behavior. Like uh, if, I, if I, if that's working correctly, as I expect it should work. If I go to Indian Red, then it, ooh, that didn't behave like I thought it would behave. Okay, so it's doing what I'm hoping that it would do. It's replacing the color slug with the room that the character ought to be in, but I'm still getting this thing rendered as Indian Red. So something is not quite going perfectly. I'm not sure what's causing causing that to break. The uh, real problem, though, is that the URL would still be wrong, right? Even if we put the right guts in the page, if the URL is bad, then, then it's a bad it's a bad bit of navigation that happened. So, um, 
Uh, so let's fix that in a better way. Let's fix that in a. Um, and let's fix that with a redirect. And what we may be able to do here is uh, let's, let's just check it out and see if request dot character dot room um, equals uh, uh, let's do room dot color slug equals quarks color slug care if they're not equal to each other. If they're not equal to each other, then I want to return, return a redirect to rooms. And again, I should be using a reverse here. Um, if I was doing this a little bit better, then uh, I'd be using reverse. But right now, you know what? Actually, I take that back. I'm not going to do it half-assed here. Let's do this whole last um, reverse. Yeah, there we go. So I should be able to use from URLs import revert or pow, put you up to the top. We should be able to do reverse. Are you kidding me right now? Um, maybe it's positional. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Wait, no, that can't be right. What's the URL say? Color slug. Expecting, it's not expecting to get the actual quarg. It's expecting to get a, a keyword argument called quargs that has all of the quargs in it. Bingo. So now, if we try to go, if I try to force it to go to another room, Indian Red, it takes me right back to whitewash. Um, until I actually click on the Indian Red Room, and that is when I get um, my old room logged. And everything went. Terminus. Okay. Um, so that gives us some uh, 
some uh, conception of the visits that have occurred on this room. Um, let's put a little bit of work into the page itself here um, so that it might give us some idea of uh, so that it might get us a little closer to our um, um, wireframe so FUD Hercules it, since I am FUD Hercules um, should be able to say that I'm here um, an unknown ghost so ghost I think is a character type we have yeah an unknown ghost so let's start rendering that out about an hour ago I think I can just use the Django human eyes Um, and then I might sort of clamp that off if there's something if it's greater than a day or two then I might just let that go um, so in rooms uh, we have the room as object and because we have that I should be able to um, I should be able to access the all the visits. So let's do that. Let's do object dot visit set all, and let's make this a for loop for visit. Here we want to have um, let's just do this class visits. We'll have another UL here, class here. We'll deal with that one later. For now the visits um, so if the visit character is not me so then uh, um, if visit dot character uh, does not equal character So if it is me, then I'll you can just say you were here. And then human eyes. Let's see what other led with the ba 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 a natural date. We'll look it up here in a second. Visit dot stamp. in human eyes. Natural day. Uh, let's look at natural time. Okay. Natural time it is. And we need to import human eyes for that. Library or 
humanized app installed. What's that? Easy peasy. Okay, so that should give us something a little bit cleaner here. Well, let's. Let's have a look at it. Okay, nothing. I've been in the Great Auburn room before, so you. Okay, good. Is it because I passed through the great? Yeah, it's because I passed through the Great Auburn room a couple times. Um, I should put this in a li tag, huh? Wouldn't that make it look better? You think? Beautiful. And then. Anybody else that visited li and unknown visit dot character dot find was here. So if anybody else was playing, then we should be able to get another action to work out like that. Enter, I've already entered. Uh, so if I try it with Gwissen, I should be able to navigate myself around and get to the I'm not doing this very well. Cornflower blue, great auburn. Here we go. So an unknown ghost was here eight minutes ago. That's cool. And then if I go to the black room and back to the great Auburn room, I was here about a second ago. Cool. So we're starting to get those things. Let's do the next one as well. The who's here right now. Um, how do we get access to that? Let's look at the map builder uh, models. No use to us here. Um, let's look at the models for character builder. What changed here? Okay. Um, the room. Um, so let's put a re reverse, let's put a related name here, related name, Those occupants, and that gives us a, the ability in the template to reference that directly. So then for occupant in object occupants all and for Let's do another if statement in here. Uh, 
Actually, I want to do nothing if I'm here. It's obvious that I'm here. I'll, I'll put it in. gets us pretty close to what um, gets us pretty close to what we have in the uh, in the wireframes so I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with that as a outcome for today's work um, I'll kick it back over to Wiley and see what he thinks about the changes and um, and we can run it from there. Actually, I want to do one more thing. He has the name of the character that's currently being played up here in the top corner, which isn't isn't the case presently. So I should be able to do that pretty easily. Um, I think he's got. I think that what we need to adjust is here in the uh, main .html. Main .html. Oh, it's not main. What is it? Uh, Base.html? Yeah, there it is. It's got header.html, which is probably what we want to look at here. HTML character name that's logged in. Bang. So you will just be character.name. We need to put some structure around that though. Character. You don't want that being filled in with some stupid stuff. Um, beautiful. Beautiful bean footage. Let's put some quotes around here. He has. Love it. Okay, and he can deal with the uh, weird spacing thing that's happening because it's not aligned correctly. Um, but I'll leave that for him to fix. Um, interesting. Inventory will need to be implemented someday. Anyhow, I'm pretty happy with how this is going today. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this out. Uh, oh crap, I should have made another. I will stash my changes, blop, blop, blop. And I will pull main, check that thing out. And I will create a new branch and I'll call this and then I will pop my stash cool um, so I made a lot of changes let's check them all in and let's um, commit it and send it up the chain I think everything is roughly working right we'll let Wiley be the ultimate judge of that so Room visits working. Current occupants being tracked. I like to close these so that I can get a feel for how much changed in any given thing. That one's easy. That one's easy. ended up not needing this um, because we didn't actually have to do that reverse thing 
this was a pretty simple bit of code to put in um, and if we need to do it again in the future I can put it back I'm gonna go ahead and discard that change because it's it's actually just not necessary I'll go back and do a little bit more testing before we quit today to make sure that that all still sits right um, not big changes to admin no big changes here either we had we added the visit class added the room that the character is currently in no big changes here uh, the database did change let's check that models here for map builder did change slightly okay this should be good room changed a bit a lot of it is sort of simple formatting stuff. Uh, some of it is more substantive, but it looks fine. Uh, and then we have a bunch of new files being added in. That is a placeholder and marker for module. Context processors is doing something simple but necessary. Middleware, likewise, is doing something simple but necessary. Um, URLs. Views. This is all straightforward. And then this new migration puts everything into appropriate alignment. Let's commit it. Let's push it. And um, as always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you found some of this useful. Feel free to drop them in the chat uh, or just hit me up with a DM somewhere. Um, and uh, come and see me again next time. Take care, everybody.